Hi, I'm Tiffany Martindale, and I'm the Impact Analysis Director for Engineers Without Borders USA. We've come to Rwanda this week to conduct our fourth impact study. Over the next three days, we're going to be visiting Engineers Without Borders USA programs with projects that were implemented over nine years ago. In more than half of the projects we're going to be reviewing, our chapters are no longer involved in the community, having fulfilled their five-year commitment to the partnership. And now we'd like to see if anything has changed in the status of those projects, but more importantly, in the lives of our partners. And this is the Les Browns Orphanage site in Muganero, Rwanda. It's one of our first programs that we implemented in the early 2000s. And the program is situated in an orphanage site. It consisted of five projects originally. We had rainwater catchment, uh, fruit dehydrators for income generation. We had uh, solar panels for electricity at the orphanage. We've got irrigation to water the pineapple fields. And then last we have cook stoves to improve indoor air quality in the kitchens at the orphanage. Unfortunately, in late 2014, the orphanage closed at, uh, as a result of a government mandate. And we didn't know what we'd find. We thought maybe the gate would be closed and it would be locked up. We're happy to see that the NGO who runs this site is repurposing the space to be an agriculture college and they're going to be able to make use of the project. So classes start in a month and they've got plans for uh, food processing classes so they'll use the fruit dehydrators and the students will live on site and so the rainwater catchment systems that are located at each house here um, will definitely come in handy and have a large impact. Through talking with the new agriculture director of the college um, the report is that we've had a great impact here, particularly with the rainwater catchment systems. They no longer need to walk 500 meters, purchase the water, and bring it back up to site. One of the most important aspects of our planning, monitoring, evaluation, and learning model is to study um, not just impact to know if projects are functioning, but really if they're working for people and how we can improve our model as a result of what we're learning in the field. And the key lesson that we've learned from staff here is the challenge of sustainability when it comes to training key partners. So we had a partner here on site who had been trained in the solar systems and, and every one of the five projects we implemented. Unfortunately, when the orphanage closed, he also left and that knowledge didn't get passed on. So now we've got staff here at the soon-to-be agriculture college who don't have the familiarity with the systems that would be required to keep them up. We, we do need to work on um, helping our chapters identify multiple key partners to train so that there's kind of a broader reach of folks who will be able to sustain the projects into the future. We are here in Rubona, Rwanda. We've come up a long, windy dirt path to get to the top of one of the taller hills in the region. And we're visiting a rainwater catchment project that we've implemented at the back of this primary school. Our impact analysis program requires that we do some triage and interview multiple stakeholders at the site. So we've spoken with the director of this school, uh, the person in charge of maintenance, and a local engineer who was involved in the implementation of the project. Uh, and today there aren't any children around at the school because it's a weekend, um, but we're going to go check out the site anyways and see how the tank is doing. So this is the rainwater catchment tank here behind the school. We've learned from the director in the community, the maintenance person, and the engineer in the region that this tank has not been functional for the last few months. And they have the budget to repair it, and they plan to in the next couple of weeks. Um, 
What has broken is unfortunately someone stole the first flush system, which is designed to wash off the, the first rains and what they bring down from the rooftop into the rainwater catchment tank. Um, and then also the tap is broken and we're having some erosion problems down towards the bottom of the tank that is, uh, is running water off into the fields below. So the director is interested in getting this repaired so that the students, when they come back to session next week, have their water supply. So we're here in the volcano region of northern Rwanda and we're going to be looking at an active EWBUSA program in the village of Munini in the sector of Chanika. So as part of this review, we've met with the village chief in Munini. We met with the representative, the project coordinator from the NGO partner, Village Makeover, and the maintenance representative from the village committee. The way that this partnership developed is the EWB USA chapter worked with the local NGO, Village Makeover, and the local government sector here to identify which cells in this region needed water the most. This community in particular, Munini, had uh, no access to water in town. They walked 50 minutes each way to a nearby lake to get their water, or they dug a hole and lined it with a plastic tarp and collected rainwater that way. Now that they have the rainwater catchment tank, we talked to some of the community members about what they do with all of that extra free time. And an interesting perspective is that they feel privileged now that they can work more with that time. Um, whereas we might hope they get a little bit of a break, they view that as the opportunity for success. They're no longer tired for walking two hours total to get their water. And, um, and now they can work harder to develop their community. So the four rainwater catchment tanks are located on the site of the village chief's office and the water committee collects uh, money from the users as they fill their jerry cans at the tap. The tanks are just behind this building here, so let's go take a look. So these are the four rainwater catchment tanks that were installed in the community's corn storage building. Um, as you can see, a number of the taps have locks on them. The way that the water community manages this system is they collect fees at the tap when users fill up their bottles. And when they're not here and available to collect the money, then they lock the system. This committee is in charge of maintenance of these tanks and to date, in the last two years, they've had no problems with anything failing or any parts being stolen because of their diligence in collecting those fees and putting them to good use to keep the systems operational. And we've met with one of the representatives from the Village Water Committee. Um, this is Kabakiera. She is in charge of access to the taps for the users. So either she or a member of her family uh, have a presence here at the taps to collect the users' fees. So we've just completed our first look at some closed EWBUSA programs in Africa, and we've learned some encouraging results. We're not only committed to implementing projects to solve immediate needs, but also to ensuring that the community has the capacity to sustain the projects far into the future. Most of the projects that we visited on this review are still functioning as designed, or they've been repaired or maintained by the community without any outside help. For those projects that were not still functioning, there was a plan and a budget in place in order to complete the repairs within the coming months. We were excited to learn that projects implemented more than nine years ago are still functioning and that they are making such a positive impact in the lives of our community partners that those partners are now committing resources to the maintenance and upkeep of their programs. Our impact assessment program is still growing and what we learn from impact reviews such as this one in Rwanda can only make our program stronger and more impactful into the future. We are very grateful to CH2M for their long-standing support of our commitment to improving people's lives through engineering and particularly for their enthusiastic backing in recent years of our developing impact assessment program.